Today we're getting into the latest Tesla news, including the brand new Model Y coming soon, Tesla's entry into India, a big new Tesla competitor, and more, so let's get into it. First up today, rumors are currently circulating about an upcoming Tesla factory that will be coming to India. Now we have word that that factory may be announced as soon as next month. Tesla has been in negotiation to build a factory in India for years, but the project had never come to fruition. Tesla sees promise in the Indian market, but they haven't been able to secure much of a foothold yet. Importing cars from Shanghai has a very strong tariff. Vehicles that cost under $40,000 have a 60% import duty, and there's a 100% duty on cars that cost more than that. These tariffs apply equally to both EVs and ICE vehicles. Tesla has been in negotiations for a while with the Indian government, trying to secure tax relief on import tariffs for electric vehicles in particular. Negotiations stalled for a while, but their government was eventually able to make a proposal. They will lower tariffs on electric vehicles if the company is willing to invest in manufacturing in India. That policy would apply to any car manufacturer, not just Tesla. In June of 2023, Elon Musk met with Indian Prime Minister Modi to announce that Tesla would be making a major investment in India. Later in July, Tesla representatives met with their commerce ministry to discuss building a factory there for their upcoming $24,000 EV. Now negotiations are in their final stages, and this factory seems to be progressing quickly. The Indian government aims to have this factory ready for approval by January. This factory's development is very interesting to see. It would be a huge step towards Tesla cracking one of the largest potential car markets in the world. What will be doubly interesting as well is seeing this factory progress in comparison to the planned Giga Mexico plant. That factory has been permitted for a while now, but economic concerns have led Tesla to putting that project on hold. If Giga India could get approved, announced, and built before Giga Mexico, a project that was announced almost a year ago, that would be quite amazing to see. It would even be amazing just to see construction begin. In a way, it does make sense though. Giga Mexico is a factory that would largely be supplementing the North American market, which is already served by Fremont and Austin. India, on the other hand, due to their high import tariffs, does not have a Tesla presence. With this factory, Tesla would essentially be unlocking an entirely new market in a country with the world's largest population. The $25,000 EV was already moved from Mexico to Austin for its initial run. But will even India get it before Mexico is able to start production? We'll have to wait and see what Tesla decides here. Next up today, we have some huge news for the upcoming brand new Model Y. Earlier this year, Tesla launched their refreshed Model 3 out of China, and that car brought a ton of new features. Among those changes, it had a sleeker exterior design with sharper head and tail lights, improved interior materials, LED accent lights, better soundproofing, 17-inch speakers, a new backseat touchscreen infotainment console, heated and ventilated front seats, and controversially, this car dropped the blinker and gear selector stocks. Now, much like the Model S and X, the turn signals are buttons on the steering wheel, while shifting is done on the center console screen. While some people may not like this stockless approach, this car is a clear improvement in pretty much every other way. As of now, that car is only available in Europe and Asia, but current rumors suggest that this car will be coming to the US in early 2024. However, Tesla's most popular car, the Model Y, has gone largely unchanged. It had a very minor upgrade also in China, but by and large, it's still pretty much the same car. This new version includes a similar interior LED light strip to the one from the new Model 3, as well as a new darker color for the stock Gemini wheels and a slightly faster acceleration with a 5.9 second 0 to 60 for the base model. For a while now, we have been expecting Tesla to roll out a proper full refresh of this vehicle, but we weren't sure when we'd see that coming. They've been working on this update under the codename Juniper, and we're expecting this car to get all of the same updates as the Model 3 and maybe even some additional features. Like the refreshed Model 3, this car should come from China first to be sold in Asia and Europe. Now we have some more word that this car is far along in the pipeline and Tesla is getting ready to move forward with it. A report from Bloomberg claims that production of this refresh may begin as early as mid-2024. According to an insider, the refresh will be made in the second phase of Giga Shanghai, which will suspend production for a week after the new year for some upgrades. At this point, we're not quite sure if that refers to the new calendar year or the Chinese Lunar New Year in February, but either way, it's coming very soon. With a refresh of this size, it does require a factory revamp and a pause in production, so it's definitely something Tesla plans a lot in advance for. Any break in production needs to be handled efficiently and be worth it for them in the end. For a refreshed Model Y bringing all of these features to their already very popular car, it would be a no-brainer. 
This refresh would be much more substantial than the minor upgrades we saw in October and would include much more obvious exterior and interior changes. We can assume that this means the Model Y is getting that new look to match the Model 3, like we've seen in a number of fan-made mock-ups that seem to be really close. We don't have a ton of new information on this car beyond that, but this is a pretty solid confirmation that it is coming pretty soon. This will help the world's best-selling car become that much more competitive. If it's like the Model 3, this refresh will come to Europe and Asia via Shanghai and then eventually come to the US at a later date. I'll be sure to keep you informed as we learn more about this car as well as whenever the refreshed Model 3 makes its way to the States. Next up today, I wanted to take a minute to talk about something that many new Tesla owners might find a bit scary if it happens to them, but may not actually be something to worry about. Some Tesla owners have been scared when they plugged in their new vehicle at a supercharger, especially in the cold, and to them it appeared to start smoking. As we are learning, there's a fairly good chance that is steam. For a bit of context, many Tesla vehicles are equipped with a heat pump, which is a way for the car to more efficiently heat the interior cabin. In cold weather, your car has to work a little harder to precondition your battery for charging by bringing it to and maintaining a constant temperature for ideal charging efficiency. In cold climates, ice can form on the AC's condenser, which when heated by the nearby heat pump will melt and turn into steam. Emergency responders in the UK put together a helpful explainer video, since this steam is something that looks like you need to worry about, but don't need to after all. You can see what it looks like here in this video, and it's definitely a bit frightening at first glance. Tesla has stated that this is normal behavior for their cars with this hardware. Quote, the thermal system may produce steam under certain conditions for vehicles with heat pumps. For example, odorless steam can come from the front of your vehicle while charging at a supercharger in cold temperatures. This is normal and not cause for concern. If you're brand new to owning a Tesla and this is your first winter owning this vehicle in a cold climate, it may catch you off guard. I've never seen it in my car too, so it would catch me off guard for sure. If it does happen though, stay calm and check that it isn't just steam. Check for things like strange sounds, odors, or black smoke, which are signs that your car may actually have an issue. If the vapor is white and odorless, then it may just be steam, like this is describing, and not something to worry about. Next up today, Tesla has announced a new partnership with a tech company that should help their customers get better monthly payments. Over the last year, high interest rates have been a point of concern for Tesla, and it has made a big impact on their prices. They've had to slash prices in order to keep selling cars, as interest rates have increased monthly payments. Elon Musk said in their October earnings call, quote, I am worried about the high interest rate environment that we're in. I just can't emphasize this enough, that the vast majority of people buying a car is about the monthly payment. And as interest rates rise, the proportion of that monthly payment that is interest increases naturally. To combat those high interest rates, Tesla has started a partnership with a company called Oregance. They offer a point of sale marketplace that allows for customers to be matched with credit unions for large purchases. Since credit unions are owned by their members and don't operate for a profit, they can generally offer lower interest rate loans than traditional banks. Like Elon said, for a lot of customers, their monthly payment is the most important thing for them while shopping for a new car. Earlier this year, Tesla began offering an 84-month loan period on their cars, specifically to meet this demand for lower monthly payments. With those longer loan periods does come high interest rates that in the long run will substantially increase the total cost of your car. If Tesla is able to offer their cars to customers with a better interest rate through this partnership, that would be great for customers across the board. More people would be able to get a Tesla at a monthly rate that makes sense for them while not having to pay a ton of extra money in interest just to extend the loan to 84 months. I'm very interested to see how this partnership works and how it may impact pricing going forward for Tesla, especially in the new year with things changing with the tax credit for the Model 3. Next up today, we have some new updates on the Cybertruck. We got to see a great demonstration of the Cybertruck's real-world utility the other day when it was able to successfully charge a Rivian R1T using the 240-volt outlet in its bed. This outlet is able to supply electricity for things like power tools and can even charge other EVs at a rate of a level 2 charger. This photo was shared on social media of the Cybertruck charging a standard R1T. According to the post, they believed that this situation arose because of a faulty CCS charger and not a hardware issue with the Rivian itself. One of the few Cybertrucks in the country was around to lend a charge. Level 2 charging is not nearly as fast as level 3, but would give enough power to get the Rivian on their way to a working charger in a short amount of time. Tesla posted a video on X showing the Cybertruck making a pretty flashy delivery to an art exhibit in San Francisco. The piece, entitled Entwined Elder Mother, is an interactive installation featuring a metal tree with lights that are powered by a Tesla solar roof and Powerwall 3. The Cybertruck was able to not only power the installation, but also deliver the Powerwall and some of its other hardware to the site itself. 
The Powerwall 3 is not available for purchase just yet, but Tesla has posted its specs on their website and suggests that it will be coming soon, although they already have installed a limited number of units in certain areas. Some Tesla fans have been keeping track of Cybertruck appearances in showrooms across the country, and according to this post by Sawyer Merritt, there's currently a Cybertruck in 9.6% of Tesla showrooms in the US. That's up from 5.5% as of a few weeks ago. Tesla is clearly ramping up production here, and will be increasing this truck's presence as they get ready to ship it more widely. Here is the list of Tesla showrooms where you can currently get an in-person look at the Cybertruck. As of right now, there are 30 showrooms that have this vehicle on display across North America, and worth noting, you can't go inside of these cars. A few days ago, certain Cybertruck reservation holders were excited to receive emails that said that they would be able to reserve more than one Foundation Series Cybertruck. Some customers were able to place an order for two Foundation Cybertrucks, but we are now learning that this was the result of a software glitch. Tesla is now reaching out to the affected customers and allowing them to convert one order to the Foundation Series and will refund their other $1,000 order fee if they went through with that purchase. As Cybertruck production is still lower than it will be once it's fully ramped up, allowing single customers to order multiple of these trucks did seem like a strange move. This makes a lot more sense, as I'm sure Tesla wants to get this truck in as many different hands as possible, even if it's just one at a time. Next up today, a new company is entering the EV scene that could prove to be a major source of competition for Tesla in the future. A Chinese smartphone manufacturer, Xiaomi, has just announced their first upcoming EV, the SU7. The company's co-founder announced at the launch event that they have ambitions to become a global leader in EV manufacturing in the next 15 to 20 years. They plan on investing $10 billion to shake up the car industry by building a quote, dream car that will rival Tesla and Porsche. He did not announce any concrete launch details or price information, but he did give us some insight into its specs. It will have a 101 kilowatt hour battery with CATL cells that should provide up to 800 kilometers or 500 miles of range. This is most likely quoting the WLTP cycle, putting it around 450 miles EPA. It will come in both single and dual motor variants with the all-wheel drive version having a 2.78 second 0 to 60 and a top speed of 165 miles per hour. In addition to CATL, BYD will also be supplying batteries. It's unclear if each will be providing battery types for different specs of this car, or if they are truly setting themselves up to massively scale this vehicle. Multiple suppliers quickly become necessary, as we've seen in Tesla's case. This is certainly an exciting EV option to keep an eye on. While Xiaomi doesn't have any prior experience making cars, they have a lot of partnerships with established manufacturers like the state-owned Beijing Automotive Holding Group and BYD. This could be how they proceed, and it will be very interesting to watch. Over at NIO, they are a car company now making a smartphone. In this case, Xiaomi is a smartphone company now making a car. At the same time, they're also working on self-driving technology, and they demoed this in action in a parking garage. The car autonomously pulls through multiple levels of a garage and then parks itself. It's sped up for the video, so we don't fully know the true context here, but it's always cool to see people working on this technology. This is another example of the level of EV innovation and competition coming from Chinese automakers specifically. BYD, for example, is set to overtake Tesla as the number one manufacturer of EVs in the world soon. If Xiaomi can deliver these promised specs, then they could shape up to be another really strong Tesla competitor and competitor for others, especially in China. With that said, we'll have to wait and see what all comes when it comes. Last up today, some updates from other automakers. Hyundai has announced their plans to launch a new affordable EV in 2025, the Ioniq 2. Hyundai's EV ambitions had a good start with the launch of their Ioniq 5 and 6 vehicles, but they have plans to become a top 3 EV producer by 2030 by selling up to 3.6 million vehicles. Hyundai hit a major export record last month following strong EV demand, and they are building a lineup of new vehicles to support future growth. Last month, the large-body Ioniq 7 SUV was spotted testing with its expected launch in 2024. Now Hyundai Europe's VP of Marketing announced that the company is working on an affordable Ioniq 2. We don't know the exact price yet, but it is likely aimed to be competitive with the recently announced VW ID2 All, which should start around $27,000 once they scale it up and get that base model out. The vehicle is expected to get 250 miles of range and will be a part of Hyundai's next-gen IMA platform. This platform will be used to power 13 new Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis vehicles through 2030 for, quote, nearly all vehicle classes, ranging from small and large SUVs to pickup trucks. We don't have many details, but it's always exciting to see more affordable EVs that will be eventually coming to market. After a very rocky launch, Chevy has announced that they will be halting sales of their 2024 Blazer EV due to a number of software issues. Chevy opened sales for this vehicle back in September, and now they are closing after only four months on the market. 
A Chevy VP said, quote, We are aware that a limited number of Blazor EV owners have experienced several software quality issues. Based on some first-hand user experiences, though, that may be a bit of an understatement. Edmonds reported over 23 separate issues with the vehicle during their two-month review period, and an Inside EV's reviewer was left stranded on a road trip due to a fault with their Blazor. Chevy claimed that the issues were non-safety related and impacted only a few vehicles, although they don't give us much more exact information. Obviously, the company must consider these issues pretty substantial if they are willing to put such a large hold on sales for this vehicle. They will spend the time fixing issues such as infotainment glitches and rare problems arising with DC fast charging. Hopefully Chevy is able to get these problems sorted quickly, and on the other side, hopefully the Blazer will prove itself as a good option for customers. Despite all of these issues, Motor Trend previously named the Blazer EV as their SUV of the year. That's all the latest Tesla news for today, so in the meantime, if you want to see what happened when my Rivian R1T suddenly stopped driving, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.